chapter 19, let us follow the reading of God's precious word together. Solemn passage of God's infallible truth, and we've come to read it. We'll read part of it this morning. I trust and pray the Spirit of God will speak to us even as we meditate upon it. Judges chapter 19, commencing to read at verse number 1. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there for whole months. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her, and to bring her again, having a servants with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him. He abode with him three days, so they did eat and drink and lodge there. It came to pass on the fourth day, when they rose early in the morning, that he arose up to depart. Damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go your way. And they sat down to eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, Therefore he lodged there again. He rose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart, and the damsel's father said, Come for thine heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat both of them. And when the man rose to, up to depart, he and his concubine, his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth toward evening, I pray thee, tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end, lodge here, that thine heart may be merry, and tomorrow get you early on your way, that thou mayest go home. The man would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled, his concubine also with him. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent. Servant said to his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into the city, this city of the Jebusites, and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither to the, into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. And he said unto his servant, Come, and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night, in Gibeah or in Ramah. They passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat down in the street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. Behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wafering man in the street of a city, and the old man said, Whither goest thou, and whence comest thou? He said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From thence am I, and I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. And there is no man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me and for thy handmaid and for the young man which is with thy servant. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever, let all the, or thy want lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Now as they were making their heart merry, behold, the old man of the city, the man of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. 
And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man has come into mine house, do thou no folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden and his concubine. Then will I bring out and humble them and do with them what seemeth good to thee, but unto this man do no, not so vile a thing. The men would not hearken to him, so the men took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all night until the morning, and when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day, fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman his concubine was fallen down in the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him onto his place. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones in twelve pieces and sent her into the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider it. Take advice. And speak your mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before thee in Jesus' precious name. We come to handle a solemn passage of thy word this morning and Lord, we're preacher, a difficult passage, and yet, Lord, we must be faithful to thy truth. And we pray today that thou will help us to honor thee, help us, our God, to listen to what thy word says, because thy word says consider it, consider it, and take advice, and speak thy mind. To this end, O God, I take that promise, Holy Ghost, that blessed power of Pentecost, O oh God, fill me to the uttermost. I take, Lord, undertake for me. And I pray this humbly and reverently in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The events of chapters 19 to 21 of the book of Judges, and we're coming to the end of this book, represents, I believe, one of the worst periods in the history of Israel. Not long after Joshua passed away, this, oh, this incident happened. And what we're seeing here is even though they have conquered the land of promise, they have been richly blessed of the Lord, yet how quickly they fall into idolatry and how quickly they fall into gross sin. And what we find is that the sins that engross this nation, affect the lives of the people, affects the values of the people, and affects the actions of the people. To be honest, I could say that this is a difficult chapter, a passage of God's Word. And I find that it is probably the most degrading story that is recorded in the Word of God. It is the story of a Levite. Someone set, set apart for God and God's worship. A Levite who takes a concubine. And he plays, who plays the harlot against him. And we find that the story will speak to us a number of the sins of this day and of this generation. I want you to notice, first of all, I believe that when you look at verse number 1, it says, It came to pass in those days there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning in the side of Mount Ephraim, who took unto him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah, and his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house. And here, I believe, we see one of the first challenges of this day. You know, I believe the most blessed institution that God has given and God has made is the institution of marriage. 
But here we find that this Levite turns away from the institution of marriage and he takes a second wife. He takes a second woman. And he takes unto himself a concubine. I believe that one of the most vicious attacks that are against the people of God today and against the standards of any society is the attack that there is upon the family or upon the home. It's one of the most vicious attacks and one of the most vicious assaults that there is from hell itself. The Word of God says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and he obtaineth favor of the Lord. 